We look at beluga in particularly as canaries in the coal mine because these animals seem to express clinical disease. They accumulate or bioaccumulate contaminants and heavy metals at a rate that suggests that they're exquisitely sensitive at um, not being able to offload the contaminants and over time we can actually monitor these. Over the last 14 years we've been very fortunate in, in being afforded an opportunity to work and camp with Inuit hunters up in the western Arctic and this has really provided us a, a chance to sample tissues and look at them to try and establish normal baseline levels whether it's normal anatomic or physiologic factors, reproductive performance, some of their prey that they may be consuming. As well, from my background, we're very interested in what sort of disease profiles are present. And so we've been charting ongoing diseases or looking specifically at diseases that may impact the health of beluga. So these are the, not only impacting or causing uh, frank mortality, but also those diseases that may impact the ability of these animals to successfully reproduce, forage, interact socially. So all of these factors we look at and try and determine what might be significant. Brucella is a bacteria that's of particular interest to us. It's one that not only impacts the reproductive ability of these animals, can cause frank mortality, but it's also one that can be zoonotic or transmitted to people. So we're very interested in tracking the prevalence of this um, exposure of these animals to brucella and the consequences of infection in these animals. And in fact, we've found fluctuations from two to about 16% per year of seropositive animals. And we don't find lesions necessarily in the western Arctic beluga, but in the eastern Arctic beluga, those animals that are hunted in Quebec and elsewhere, these animals are presented with reproductive lesions. So they have injured or damage to their reproductive tracts that very likely contribute to reduced fecundity or in a, their reproductive success. So that's just an example. Dr. Grigg will talk about toxoplasmosis, and then there'll be other entities that we've also been looking at quite extensively. One of the most common parasites that we find in marine mammals is a parasite called toxoplasma. Toxoplasma is, um, its definitive host is the cat, and um, this is a, par a parasite that can affect people who are immunocompromised. We wanted to explore with the fact that with climate change and changes in anthropogenic activities and an increase in density of cats and dogs in Inuit communities, whether this, they, those, the import of cats was bringing with them the parasites. And would they then be getting into the marine mammal stocks that are actually a part of the traditional Inuit diet? And so for the last 14 years, we were screening um, beluga from the Western Arctic and the Beaufort Sea, which is considered to be a healthy population of beluga whale. And in 2009, um, using molecular PCR techniques, we identified the first positive um, a beluga, and we identified the parasite uh, present in the diaphragm and the heart. Um, PCR is just one technique. We then developed a blood test um, to be able to identify antibodies that are present in the beluga. And since 2006, we've seen a low-grade um, prevalence of toxoplasma seropositivity in beluga whale.